Right, so uh, thanks for the introduction. I think I'm just going to hold this. So um, I'm just going to talk today about uh, HoneyDocs. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, how many of you know about HoneyDocs or know what that is? OK, cool. Um, so what I'll do, I'll just uh, quickly cover what HoneyDocs are. And so essentially, HoneyDocs are uh, documents that were solely designed to make people want to download them and open them, right? So uh, we can think about an attacker, someone who's trying to uh, study your company, or an insider, someone who's trying to download files they shouldn't. Um, so the whole point is to lure them. Uh, and uh, these documents can be usually Word documents, but uh, just the same, they can be PDFs, uh, PowerPoint files, even Excel files. So. Uh, just to quickly demonstrate uh, how effective uh, HoneyDocs can be, uh, in this example, I'm sending an email with uh, supposedly a job application uh, document uh, to someone. So as soon as the email is sent uh, and that person opens the document, uh, in this case, this is an old system of uh, something I'm going to show you later, but that's, that was the first version of my HoneyDoc system. So as soon as the document was opened, we can see that uh, they used a Mac OS X, uh, used Office Word version 14.41, and uh, where they came from uh, using uh, the IP information. Also down below there's uh, IP who is data, so you can see what organization they came from and so on. So already a very powerful system just to see uh, who's really behind uh, uh, the, the information theft or someone, for example, if someone is bugging you with spam and won't uh, stop, I'm talking about like targeted phishing attacks, you want to know who that is, that's a good example too. So yeah, this is the information I just mentioned. And uh, so in this case, I emailed back that person, I told him that I noticed that uh, his version of Word is uh, out of date. And uh, his response was uh, basically, was uh, crying, saying that it's not fair because uh, Word just popped up that uh, update window. But uh, if it was a penetration tester and that was a penetration uh, uh, exercise, I could have easily delivered a specific exploit to that version of Office. Um, just an example for pen testers. So for the sake of, uh, I just want to see what kind of other ideas I can get from you guys. So can you guys think of any other use cases for Honey documents? So I've showed you a quick example. Anything practical in the security world? Anyone has any ideas? Yeah. Seed inboxes, like someone, if someone breaks into your inbox and you want to know about it, right? That's actually a good uh, example. I was thinking about that today to include it in my presentation, but I didn't. <laughs> but uh, I just didn't have the time to uh, do the extra screenshots. But yeah, that's a great example. At Sector, I heard examples of, uh, for example, uh, like data leak prevention or policy enforcement. You want to know that people don't open specific documents at home, that they only get opened in the office, because you want to be able to control how data uh, leaves the perimeter. Um, so that's an example, but I'm going to show you some other examples uh, that I could think of. Um, so I'm going to give you a scenario. You're a company and there's right now a, a group that wants to infiltrate your, either your industry or your specific company. So the first thing they're going to do is Google about you, see what kind of information was cached on the web. Um, you obviously have a website, so they're going to start investigating, looking into your website, see what information they can get that they shouldn't. Um, so I'm going to ask another question. What would you do uh, if you were the bad guy? Put yourself in their shoes. What would, you, what would be the first quick thing that you would do on someone's website to find stuff you shouldn't? Yeah, that's, yeah, using Google, right? But like, let's focus just on the website. What would be the first thing you would try to look at? So I'm just going to throw, uh, the example I'm going to use is the robots file. So every website, in order to tell search engines what you want them to cache and what you don't want them to cache, 
uh, usually list off stuff that is supposedly private. But as an attacker, usually that would be the first place I want to go in to look at stuff that's supposed to be secret or private, right, from search engines. Um, so the idea here is really to create a system that can alert us when people are doing this kind of uh, investigations into your company. You want to know ahead of time when someone is looking at places they shouldn't, which probably means that you know, they have uh, uh, their agenda is probably not something that's constructive. Uh, and the whole point here is to really slow the attacks and make them, first of all, figure out what's real, what's not. And now they have to be extra careful not to trip any alarms because after they've uh, opened the document, they'll realize probably that it was a honey document, but, but that's good. That's going to make them even more cautious. That's going to make them uh, hesitate, probably even go to a different target, someone who has less uh, defenses that are, you know, I want to say advanced, but worse than yours. So I'm going to show you very quickly uh, how to do this. So as I said, first of all, we need to create the honey documents. Make sure you name them with uh, interesting file names like passwords or employees or a new account set up. These are probably the files you want to look at as an attacker if you want to infiltrate them. Um, so on your web server, uh, hopefully the corporate web server, but uh, be careful, uh, create a new folder. And that folder specifically, I want you to enable directory listing on it. Uh, and I'll show you why. But be, again, be careful and make sure that all the other directories don't have directory listing. But once we have that, we can update the robots file and add some lines like that. So as an attacker, once you see something like docs on, on this file, that's probably going to be one of the first places you're going to go and try to visit, see what's in there. So this is probably what you're going to see. And if you're the bad guy and you see this, you just stumbled on this, what you, you're probably going to download all of them. And I'm really, I really doubt that you're going to run them in a VM or through a proxy once you open these documents. No one suspects documents, uh, Word documents. So once that happens, this is what I'm going to see. I'm going to get an email that tells me, hey, your document was opened. Uh, from this IP address, probably from this location, and this is the operating system uh, and other details that uh, uh, that person used. So this is actually an alert email from a system I'm going to show you later that um, I'm releasing, that I released at Sector, but uh, it would show you also a lot more information. So other use cases um, we mentioned before, but I, I want to go over, uh, for an example, a honeypot. So let's create a, a system either inside your company with an FTP server. Enable, if you want, uh, anonymous access on it. You don't have to. You can even use just uh, weak passwords. But seed it with a bunch of these documents. As soon as someone op downloads the document and opens it, bam, again, you have that info. You know where they came from and what machine they used. Um, very simple to create and uh, very effective. Another example would be uh, using Google. So we mentioned Google hacking. So what you could do is actually seed some, some of these documents on a website, wait for Google to cache them, but use interesting names like, and this is, this is a, an actual example, but you can just use the same uh, naming procedure. Um, and if I was one of the bad guys, I would definitely go after these. Uh, I would probably search for documents with strings like clogging, uh, new account, staff, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so right away, uh, another, sys another good way to uh, alert you when someone does uh, and looks for sensitive information. Uh, how many of you throw away hardware, uh, old hardware? How many of you are concerned about people going through your garbage? So yeah, a lot of people bother with shredding, but not everyone can afford it. It's an expensive procedure, but as an interesting test to see who's looking at your garbage bin, besides putting a camera, I guess, would be to just you know, throw a bunch of USB keys, maybe an old hard drive that you zeroed out, obviously, and you know, just put some documents, create some folder structure there, and just wait to see the ping on, on your dashboard. That would be a great test to see really dedicated people. No, normal people wouldn't do that, but that would be a great example. 
Um, another example would be, I mentioned earlier, scammers. So this is an actual email we got in 2013. Uh, someone was doing spear phishing on us. So they sent this, uh, this email specifically to uh, the finance uh, uh, department asking for wire transfer details. Uh, we're a security company, so we're pretty uh, savvy when it comes to detecting these kind of emails, but um, it was really well done, well researched. So we decided to you know, really uh, play with the guy and see who's uh, behind these attacks. So we just replied back to the person with uh, a document called wire transfer details. Uh, and it was the same structure you'd expect to see in a wire transfer document, but it, everything was bogus and, uh, and it was bugged. And yeah, we saw where it came from, but in this case, we couldn't really do anything about it. It was in a foreign country, but at least that way, we can assess the threat. We can tell uh, where the guy is coming from, what their technical capabilities are. If he came from a proxy or some sort of VPN, an address that is uh, known to be uh, not associated with any organization, then you can probably suspect that this is a sophisticated attacker, and it should probably be uh, prepared across the organization to address uh, more targeted attacks. But if it was just some guy uh, or some kid uh, sending these because you know he got some software on a Russian forum, then I wouldn't worry about it too much. Just uh, ask my security guys to look for that stuff. So how much time do I have? I have enough time. So I'm going to show you quickly how to create a very basic Honey document. Um, so this, uh, this technique I'm going to show you, I tested it on Windows, on Mac, and on Linux. Uh, and it works on every system, and it's, uh, it's great. And it's very simple, too. So all you have to do is start with an empty text file. Uh, and what we're going to do, we're going to write uh, a little bit of HTML inside, really, just about six lines of code. There are um, really two components here. There's the text. And then, um, if you guys can see, the, uh, the second line from the bottom is actually an image tag. So if you'd run this document in a browser, what would happen? Yeah, exactly. The browser would try to fetch that image, right? That would be the first thing the browser would do. Um, and it doesn't matter if that specific URL exists or not. Uh, that server would be contacted from your, by your browser and try to actually grab that file. So that's, that's a good idea. But so let me tell you a little secret. Word documents are actually browsers. Uh, sorry. Uh, Office uh, Word, the, the application itself also can render HTML documents. So if we actually rename our file, um, so if we rename it, save it as .doc, Word would actually open it. So let's see what happens. So this is actually how it would look like. Um, for the sake of uh, making things simple, I put a uh, very confusing text that says uh, document error, but it could be anything. It could be an actual document. Um, some guys actually, when we sent this kind of template, they uh, tried to open the document at least three times because they thought it was an actual error. Uh, I've seen that too. So, But the, the good thing is now that uh, uh, we know that the image was fetched, or at least uh, the uh, Word, Word tried to fetch that image, we can now go to our web server and look at the logs. Uh, if the, the actual image exists on the server, you'll look at uh, the access log, but if not, at the error log. So you'd run something like this, right? You'd grab for that keyword that we used. Let me just go back. Uh, here, um, the, as you can see at the end here, we used unicorn. That would be the tag you're going to search for. But it could be anything else. It could be just a string of unique numbers or, um, or anything you want to look for. But you want to make sure it's unique so you don't see too much information in the logs when you get there. So this is uh, the type of information you get back. So you'll see the IP address of the person. Uh, this is the tag we looked for, but the, the interesting stuff is what kind of operating system and computer they used and the version of uh, Word. So this would work um, for, as I said, Word, but I haven't tested this technique for uh, Excel. I'm pretty sure Excel is not going to render HTML documents. It's just a different format completely. Uh, it's not for documents. And PowerPoint, probably not. But um, there, are, there is another method to work with Excel and PowerPoint. So, but there are two problems. 
with using this technique. So if you're a little bit suspicious of these documents, the first thing you're probably gonna do is run the file command. You wanna see uh, what kind of, uh, uh, how the system detects it. So uh, in this case, OSX uh, sees the .doc, but it considers it as an HTML document uh, because of the content and uh, the magic bytes in the beginning. So the next test you probably want to run is, uh, because it's a text document in HTML, you probably wanna cat the document, see what's in there, open it with a, a text editor, in, and you'll see that you know, there's an image tag with a weird URL inside, and that would be probably your clue. So, as I mentioned, those are problems that uh, would affect you if you're trying to go after more sophisticated people, if you're trying to actually uh, bypass uh, you know what, even systems that would filter for that kind of stuff, but the, if you were going against a sophisticated guy, you'd probably want to use a doc, uh, docx. So I uh, spent some time actually researching on how to perform that in uh, Word documents uh, with the open XML format. And um, I'm just gonna show you that, but very quickly about uh, open XML. So these are essentially containers that uh, are, it's, all, it's essentially one zip file. That's got a bunch of XML files in it. And uh, there's also resources and other images. Uh, but what I really wanna focus here is on how I quickly, uh, how I was able to reverse uh, document, uh, open XML documents. So for the first, uh, the first test, the, the first procedure would be to create a document with a text and an image, just so you can see how the structure looks like. Uh, that would be an example of something you create and you know, save that document, and now you, you probably want to unzip uh, that f uh, file. So the document structure would be something like that. The, that's the folders, uh, the folders that are in the zip file. And there are really two files that we're interested in. There's the relationship file, and there's the document file where all the content goes. The relationship file contains all the information that the document references. So images, um, links uh, to websites and so on, all the hrefs, everything goes in the relationships file. So uh, this is the document file, so we can see the text that we created, but uh, more interesting is, so this is uh, uh, the XML structure for embedding an image in, an, in a Word uh, document. Um, so pay attention to the ID here, the embed ID. This is something that we're gonna see again in the relationships file. Uh, so that's how it looks like, that's the relationships file. Uh, we can see the image name and the ID showing up again. So let's break it down very quickly. This is just one tag and the only thing that really pops out is the media image file. So if you were in my shoes, the first thing you'd probably want to do is change that value with a web URL, right? So that was the first test I did and uh, it didn't work. Turns out after a little bit of research that there's an extra attribute that you can add that tells Word to actually fetch uh, documents remotely. So if you have a URL and you have target mode external, Word would happily go to uh, the internet and fetch that uh, image for you. And voila, now we have our tracking method. This is the same technique that marketers use to track if you open their email, right? They have images. If you allow uh, to view images in your mail client, we can, they can tell easily on the web server logs that uh, you specifically opened uh, your email. So I'm borrowing the same technique. So to make things easier, this is a bit complicated if you want to do it uh, more than once. I actually created uh, a web uh, application that does it for you. Um, and the cool thing is it actually supports Excel files and PowerPoint files um, using a similar technique, but the structure between PowerPoint and Excel and Word is a little different in the uh, XML structure. Um, so it's a free website. Uh, East Entire, the company I work for, is uh, sponsoring the hosting and the SSL certs and all that, so thanks for them. Uh, but what I really want you to know is, uh, okay, I'm gonna show you a quick demo on how to use it. So, five minutes, okay. 
So we're just going to create a, a, an Excel file very quickly, put some data in it. So we save it to the desktop. I don't need this anymore. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to upload this now to the website. Logged in, file was uploaded. So now what the system did in the background, it actually patched uh, this uh, document that I uploaded. I'm going to go to the details here, and what I need to do is download the patched version. So now there's the tracking code uh, similar to the technique I showed you. Uh, as soon as I open the document, it should essentially try to fetch an image there by pinging the system. So if I'm going to refresh here, I should, I should see something. But this is a demo, so demos never work. <laughs> so what I'm going to do <laughs> is uh, I, I, pre I prepared for this. So I have uh, the local system. Uh, my, the internet here is just not very good, I guess. So let's try this again. I swear it worked at uh, Sector. OK, so we opened the document. So hopefully we should see. <laughs> All right. Goddamn demos. All right. Trust me, it works. <laughs> it's just uh, I'm, I'm using a, a, a 3G internet here. I'm just, I guess it's not working very well. But uh, it works well with PowerPoint, Excel files, as I mentioned. And there's a. Uh, no, this is not working. OK. So I'm just going to show you very quickly some other use cases. Um, as I mentioned, in a pen test, you'd want to fingerprint to know what kind of operating system your target is using, what version of uh, PowerPoint, Excel, Word, whatever they're using. Uh, as a marketer, you might want to send some collateral to see if uh, uh, your clients actually opened it. Um, if you're in sales and you're sending you know, RFP documents. Um, if you're job hunting and you want to see the company you sent your document to, actually opened the resume, or if they opened it more than once, which usually means that you know, they sent it to other people in the company, which could be a good sign. Um, but more than that, um, I took it to the next step. I don't know if you guys heard, but uh, a few months ago, there was this, uh, a few articles about Dropbox opening your documents. Turns out that uh, if you upload Word documents to Dropbox, uh, for the purposes of creating thumbnails, they'll render the document. They'll open them for you, uh, which could be kind of bad if you're very conscious about your privacy. So um, knowing that, I went to investigate other services. So uh, I don't know if you guys are using Ma Amazon Workspaces, but they have this uh, file sync uh, service that essentially uh, lets you sync your files from your computer to Amazon. So it turns out once you upload a document to Amazon, they'll open it for you as well. How nice. And uh, in this case, they're using Windows 7, apparently. Google Drive. How many of you are using Google Drive? More than, than I, I saw hands for, but um, turns out they do that as well. But what I found really interesting about Google Drive that when they do open your documents, uh, they're using Windows XP and Internet Explorer as the user agent to identify uh, the browser that uh, uh, fetches those images from the documents. So I don't know if they're trying to play with me, uh, but <laughs> if you guys want, <laughs> I'm not condoning it, but you're welcome to try some you know, Windows XP exploits on, in some of those Word documents. But uh, that's the, the user agent strings they sent me. So uh, that's pretty much it. I don't have anything else, and I think uh, I'm just on time. As I mentioned, docping.me uh, is free to use if you want to create your own documents, uh, your own uh, uh, honey docs. Uh, the only thing is that someone actually mentioned to me at Sector is that uh, because you need to upload a document to patch it, uh, they can't do that with uh, uh, confidential information, right? They're going to be afraid of uh, uploading stuff. So actually, a friend of mine suggested that instead, and that's going to be the next feature, uh, what the document will do, you'd be able to create a blank document that already has a tracking code, and then just you know paste everything into that or just start writing in this. And uh, it'll do it for Word, uh, Excel, and PowerPoint. And think of it as Google Analytics for Word documents. Or as a security tool. It's up to you. Um, so that's that. And uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to take them now. OK.